All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. Sorry if my voice sounds a bit off, I'm a bit congested. But obviously we're in the middle of November now, so it's time for another U.S. monthly drought update. So starting as usual with the two uh, massive biggest reservoirs, Lake Mead and Lake Powell, both located along the Colorado River, with Lake Mead supplying water to Las Vegas and the surrounding area, as well as, along with Lake Powell, both serving the purpose of uh, being a massive extra water store from which additional water can be released when the uh, flow of the Colorado River is not enough, which it has been pretty consistently not enough for quite some time. As most lakes and reservoirs uh, do have uh, seasons throughout the year where they regain some water and then when they lose more water, based on uh, the different timing and patterns of precipitation and snow melt and everything, But as we've been going through the 21st century so far, uh, they've been pretty consistently losing more water each year than they've regained, constantly having to release extra water uh, downriver to make sure the river flow stays ample enough to keep the border reservoir along the California and Arizona border from which the Colorado River Aqueduct System draws water to pipe over to Southern California and the Los Angeles area. That's the real, actual, uh, big usage source. And so looking at each one specifically, Lake Mead, the previous year or the previous uh, drawdown season, had dropped down to 1,083 or 1,082 elevation feet of water level as the U.S. lake system is measured by elevation feet. So not how deep the lake is, but how high the surface of the water is above sea level. If Lake Mead were full, it would be back up at uh, 1,225 or so. However, keep in mind, reservoirs are not uh, straight-walled, rectangular swimming pools. They are flooded canyons or valleys and the like. So they get narrower and narrower the further down you go. In Lake Mead, the previous uh, declining season got down to about 1082, and over the recharging season, it regained uh, five or six feet up to 1088, and then this year, it dropped all the way down to about 1068 or so, and for the last number of months, uh, mostly fluctuated around that area. And in terms of and in terms of how full it actually is, how much volume uh, remains. That had it down to only 35% of capacity. Well now, since last month, it's uh, lost a bit more water and has dropped down to about uh, 1,066 elevation feet, uh, which now has it down from 35 to 34% full. And Lake Mead is downstream of Lake Powell, and Lake Powell lost quite a bit of water level this year. It began dropping down from about 3,582 elevation feet, got down towards around 3,560, and it went through its uh, recharge season and uh, basically only regained like three feet and then immediately lost those three feet within a matter of like a couple weeks and has kept going. Granted, as of the last uh, month or two, it's been losing water level uh, more slowly, now down uh, close to 3,543, which has brought it down under 30%, uh, down closer to 29 presently at 29.23% of its total capacity. Now moving down to the south, to Arizona, where most of the population of the state lives in around Phoenix, Uh, the Phoenix area gets its water from a collection of multiple surrounding reservoirs and measures their total collective uh, current volume percentage. And over the course of the year, it had dropped down from the upper 70s in percent full down towards uh, about 66 or 65. And then during the summer, Arizona got quite a bit of rain and thunderstorms that was able to uh, replenish the water level up towards like mid 70s, around 75 or so percent full. However, since then, everything has just resumed going down and now it's back down to 68 percent full collectively. Whereas comparatively, this time last year, uh, the total across the surrounding reservoirs was 10% higher, back up at 78% full. Now up in Utah, where similarly uh, most of the population lives uh, around the Salt Lake City area, the water is drawn from a number of rivers and streams and such coming down from the mountains, which are fed by flowing out from a number of reservoirs, of which the list includes the Pine View Reservoir, whose chart, unfortunately, when I went to uh, try to take the usual screenshot, was a bit glitched out. So, sorry I can't provide that this time. 
but the Pine View Reservoir, if full, would be at about 4,900 elevation feet. If empty, uh, it doesn't have to drop that far, uh, only down to about 4,818. And at the end of uh, the previous recharge season, it had gotten back up into the lower 4,890s. And then over the course of this year, it lost uh, about 40 feet of water level, or a bit more, and dropped down all the way to around 4,850 elevation feet. Since getting down that low, however, it has really gradually been climbing back up, as northern Utah has uh, finally been getting some precipitation. And so the Pine View Reservoir has crept its way back up to about 4,855 as of the last update. Also supplying the area is the Deer Creek Reservoir, uh, who tops out at 5,418 elevation feet. Uh, they would be empty down at like 5,270 or around that area. And at the end of their uh, previous recharge season, uh, they'd gotten back up a bit over 5,400 to like 5,402 or 3, I think. And then, and over the course of this year, they got as low as 5,388. However, as previously mentioned, off and on precipitation has uh, finally been coming occasionally to Utah over the last uh, couple months. So Deer Creek Reservoir has been able to refill a little bit from 5388 up to uh, 5392. And the Jordanelle Reservoir, which is given in percentages, on the other hand, uh, kept dropping. However, the precipitation finally getting received by northern Utah has uh, drastically slowed the rate at which it's dropping. It started off the summer around 73% full, and got all the way down uh, to the upper 50s. However, then as Utah started getting precipitation over the last uh, month or two, it's drastically slowed down, but has still kept going down, and is now down uh, close to 52% full. Now over to the west of everyone, to the big mega water consumer state, California, whose uh, reservoir levels in all different locations of the state affect the entire state, as their water distribution system is interconnected statewide, it's not, it's not like proximity based. There's a network of aqueduct systems throughout the state that move water uh, from reservoirs in different locations, which tend to be uh, not actually really close to population centers from those locations across various distances to where the water is desired. Now, starting with the state's biggest reservoir, Lake Shasta. Lake Shasta began its drop this year up at uh, like 975 or 980 elevation feet in between that range and dropped by almost 100 feet of water level over the course of the year, getting all the way down almost to 880. It was around 882 or so. And now over the last month and a half or so, California has finally actually received some rain in the form of two uh, waves or fronts of large amounts of storms. And those have given some replenishment to the reservoirs. Lake Shasta has been replenished uh, by the enormous amount of rain from 882 up to still under 900, up to about 894 elevation feet, which percentage-wise, uh, Lake Shasta had gotten down to 22 or 21% full, and the water level it's regained has brought it back up to 24% full. Folsom Lake uh, started out its decline uh, for this year at least around 400 elevation feet and had gotten down to around 370 and then the two massive waves of rain came recently and that has uh, brought it up to about 394 and it looks like the mid 390s is where it's going to level off and I believe at 370 Folsom Lake was down into the upper 20s in terms of uh, its percentage full uh, the water replenishment has now brought it back up to 35. Lake Orville, one of the better known ones, uh, because it's the one whose hydroelectric dam actually had to shut down because the water level was so low. Lake Orville began this year's decline at around 730 elevation feet and uh, got all the way down under 630. Lake Orville actually lost over 100 feet of water level. And it was hanging out around 628 until the uh, waves of rain came recently, the first of which uh, brought it back up to about 658, and the second of which uh, now has almost brought it back up to 670 or so, and translated percentage-wise, Lake Orville had gotten down to 22% full, and the over 40 feet of water level it's regained uh, has brought it back up to 
still under 30%. It's back up to 29% full. The Hatchetche Reservoir, uh, the one responsible for supplying water over to the San to the San Francisco area. If full, Hetch Hetchy would be at about 3,806 elevation feet. Uh, if empty, down at 3,500. Like always remember, they're flooded canyons and valleys, so it gets narrower and narrower the further down you go. Uh, normally, Hetch Hetchy on a given year will go down to like 3,750 or 3,740, and then during its recharge season, it will refill completely back up over 3,800. Well, last year it did pretty bad. It got almost all the way down to 3,700 itself and was only able to refill up to 3,786. And this year it was on its way down and had gotten down to, and had gone down to 3,730 elevation feet. And then the rains came, the first of which brought it back up to 3,752. And the second of which has brought it back up to about 3,756. Uh, the San Luis Reservoir uh, was the only one so far to have fallen down into single-digit percentiles. San Luis began its uh, fall this year from about 470 and got all the way down almost to only 350, well over a 100-foot drop. And then the waves of rain came recently, and those have brought it back up to 391. Percentage-wise, it had, as I said, gotten all the way down into single digits, it was down to only 9% full. Now going from 350 back up to 391 has brought it back up to 22% full. Lake McClure is a bit farther south and was out of the range of the majority of the rains, so it didn't uh, get so it didn't get replenished uh, as much as the others, uh, comparatively at least. Lake McClure, when the rains came, was down closer to like 660 elevation feet which had it down at uh, only 18% full, and the rains have now brought it back up to a bit under 677 elevation feet, which has translated percentage-wise to going up by 2%, from 18 or so back up to 20% of its total capacity. New Bullard's Bar began its drop of the year uh, from 1,860, and got all the way down close to 1,790, which would have had it uh, roughly in the range of about 20% or so. And the first wave of mega rain brought it back up to 1,813 elevation feet. The second uh, didn't do as much, uh, brought it back up to now 1,819. Roughly work that out to between 34 and 35 percent. And lastly, the Comanche and Pardee reservoirs. Comanche had fallen down from uh, the 50s or so down to uh, about 40 percent full. And for the last several months, it kind of leveled off and has been fluctuating between 40 percent and 46 or 47. It's kind of been within that range at least. It's been all over the place. And the Pardee Reservoir was consistently falling uh, from up in the 80s down through the 70s and was heading down towards 70 percent full. Uh, however, then the recent rains came and have brought it back up to 80 percent full. So that's our look through the selection of the major numbers. Uh, that's where things are standing at the moment water-wise for the uh, different states and regions included at least. Washington and Oregon are not so much a concern anymore as over the last month or so they finally started uh, getting the amounts of rain that they're normally used to getting as the Pacific Northwest. But anyways, that's it for this one. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. I have a bunch of other episodes about different stuff. Plenty of them aren't really uh, date or time frame specific. But that's it for me for now, so may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.